In this video tutorial series, I'm going to show you how to create an endless runner game using Python code. We will be using the Pygame Zero module within Python to help us make this game. And just to give you a sneak peek at the finished product of this endless runner, I'll play the game now for you very quickly to show you what we're making. So we are this zombie in the bottom left of the screen who has to jump over these spikes coming towards them at a fairly decent rate of knots. As we jump over the spikes, we get one point added to our score. You'll also notice little ghosts that fly across the screen. They are worth five points if you can collect them as well, just for a bit of a top up to your score. Now the job, is, oh sorry, the goal of the game is to basically stay alive as long as possible and to get the highest score. If you hit the spikes, you don't have any lives, it's immediately game over. Okay, so that's what we will be making in this tutorial. And as you can see, it is open uh, to a bit of expansion, so feel free to expand on this game once you've finished the tutorial series. To get started on making this game, you will need to open up your Python editor. I'm using the editor called Mew, which is fantastic for beginners um, with coding. It's a free download, and I'll put a link to that in the video description below. Once you are in Mew, if you're using it um, like I am, you'll need to make yourself a new document. Delete any text on the screen, so we don't need it. And change your mode in the top left there to Pygame 0 and click OK. After you've got your screen ready to go, you need to get your folder structure set up. So on your computer somewhere, you need to make a folder called Zombie Run. And when you open that Zombie Run folder up, I want you to make four more new folders. And they need to have the same names as what I've got here. So fonts, images, music and sounds. Inside of those four folders, you need to include the assets that you're going to be putting into your game. If you're in my class, I'll give you those assets, but if you are watching on YouTube, then check the links in the video description below where you will find um, all of those assets. So in the fonts folder, you need to put the creepster font. In the images folder, you need to stick all the images we'll be using within the game. I'm going to come back to this folder in just a moment to tell you something important. In the music folder, we've got a background image, a uh, background music, sorry that we'll be playing throughout the game. And in the sounds folder, we've got two sound effects that we will be using. Okay, so just quickly back to the images folder, I just need to make you aware when you download the bats, okay, you only get the first two images. I actually got into Photoshop and opened up bat two and selected the wings and just lowered them a little bit more to make bat three. And bat four is just a replica or an identical copy of bat number two. So just copy and paste it and rename it to bat four. So that's how I got four bats instead of two. Uh, the other image that I did create myself were, or was this house's image here. What I did was made a document in Photoshop again with a transparent background that's 800 by 400 pixels. And I just copied and pasted one by one the four houses that I downloaded from the internet into that um, file. Once they are in a line and they're fairly similar size, I drop the opacity of the overall image to 50%. The opacity is just the transparency, so they became somewhat washed out as they, become, as they became transparent. And the reason I did that is because this is part of our background in our game, and I don't want it to stand out and um, detract from the main characters. Okay, so the houses and Bat 3 are the only two images that I had a little bit of a play with in Photoshop. All right, so let's get started on making this game. The first thing we want to do in Mew is import the modules that we're going to need to make this game. Now, the first two modules we import are pretty standard. So we're going to import the Pygame Zero Run module, and we're going to import the random module. First one just allows us to create games using Python code. The second one allows us to randomize things um, within our game. And we're going to talk more about that when we get to them later on in this tutorial series. Now there's a third module that we need to import. And we actually have to download this module from a website. It's a free download. And again, I will provide the link in the video description below if you need it. Okay, so it's called the Pygame Zero Helper module. And basically, there are some functions missing from Pygame Zero that you would expect to see in it. Okay, they're present in Scratch, but they're not present in Pygame Zero. So this helper module actually adds to Pygame Zero and includes a few of those functions that you do see in Scratch. Uh, if you want to see how it all works and uh, have a look at all the list of the functions that are included in this module, just scroll down the website here and have a look at them all. It'll provide examples on how they can be included in your code and how to write them up. 
Okay, but for now, all I want you to do is click this link that says download it here. It will download a zip folder onto your computer. Click on it and move this file here. I'm just going to press Control X to cut it out and stick it in your zombie run folder. It needs to be outside of those four folders, so just there. Leave the name as it is, PGZ Helper. Jump back over to your code. We're just going to import it slightly different um, to what we've done above. So we're just going to write from PGZ Helper, import asterisk. So what this is saying is we are going to import all the functions with inside the Pygame Zero Helper module. All right, so they're the modules or the libraries of code that we're going to be um, accessing to help create this game today. Next thing I want to do is just set up my game screen dimensions. So I'll put in a comment that says just that. Now the dimensions are just the um, width and height, so we need to use the reserved words in um, Python of width and height in capital letters. And we just use pixels to define um, our size. So I'm going to go 800 pixels for the width and 600 pixels for the height. Probably a good time to just play your game at the top just to make sure that um, your code is working. It'll tell you to save your game first before we run it. So go and find your zombie run folder that you just created and save your file into that. So I'm going to call my file zombie run, just like the folder name. And you should see an empty black box appear on the screen like so. That box should be 800 pixels across, 600 pixels down. Okay, that's all we've got so far. Next thing I want to do is put in a background. Now this background is going to be two colors. It's going to be a black rectangle for the sky and a smaller black rectangle for the ground that our zombie runs along. So to get these filled in rectangles into our game, we first of all need to define the colors we're going to use. So I'm going to put a comment there that says colors. I'm going to create a variable first of all for the color black. So black equals and inside a set of round brackets, we need to come up with the RGB color code for the color black. So you're probably wondering what the hell I'm talking about there. If you jump over to Google and search RGB color picker, and this little contraption will pop up, and you can go around and click on all sorts of different colors using the slider and the click box up here, and get different codes for those particular colors. So I'm looking for the color black at the moment, so I need to move this little pointery thing down into the bottom right hand corner of the page. Not working exactly how I want it to, so um, you can't quite see what color I'm looking for, but I'm looking for pitch black, which I know the RGB color code is 000. So RGB stands for red, green and blue, and all it is doing is mixing those three colors together to create a whole range of other colors. So we're going to put absolutely no colors together, 0, 0, and 0 to make black. The other color I want to use is brown for the ground. So brown will equal, and you can go and click on uh, these darker colors over here, and you'll see that you're getting shades of brown as you do so. When you find a brown that you like, copy that RGB code, those three numbers, over into your code. So the brown I'm going to be using is 71, 34 and 18. You can copy mine if you want, or you can come up with your own shade of brown. So they're the two colors we're going to be using in the background. Now to draw um, the rectangles onto the screen, we need to go down a bit lower and we need to draw it inside of the draw function. So let's create that draw function first of all. Now remember in Pygame Zero, this is a really important function, the draw function. It draws all the elements onto the screen for us or into our game for us. So let's start with the black rectangle, which is going to be the sky. We're not actually going to see it when we test it because our window, I can't test it right now anyway, is already black. So we're going to draw this rectangle rectangle in, and you just have to trust me that it is in the game. Okay, so to draw this rectangle, we're going to write screen.draw.field underscore not circle, we want a rectangle. And you don't have to write the entire word rectangle, you just have to write rect. So that's the function we're going to be using. Now there's a bit we need to um, add into this function. So open up a set of brackets and write the word rect again, this time with a capital R. And we're going to set up, open up a set of two more um, rounded brackets there. And what we're going to put in here are the coordinates where we want to draw 
this um, black rectangle in the sky. The first two numbers you need to type in are the x and y coordinates for the start position of this rect rectangle. So the top left hand corner of the rectangle. Where do you want it to start? Well I want it to start in the top left hand corner of my page. So I know those coordinates are 0, 0. I then want it to stretch out all the way across the page. So the next number I'm going to write in is 800. This is where I want my rectangle to finish being drawn. So it's going to finish on the right hand side of the page. And the final number I'm going to put in is the Y axis. Where do I want my rectangle to finish on the Y axis? Well I know my page is 600 height, so I want it to finish a little bit before the bottom of the page. So about 500. So just to recap, the first two numbers here are the X and Y coordinates for where you want the rectangle to start. So in this case, 0, 0 is the top left hand corner of the page. The final two numbers in, bra in the brackets here are where you want your rectangle to finish being drawn. So the coordinates will be 800 on the x-axis, so the far right hand side of the page, and 500 on the y-axis, so down towards the bottom of the screen. All right. After that, you just put a comma outside the brackets, and then in another set of rounded brackets, type in the color you want to use. So I want to use this black variable there. That will make my rectangle filled in black. And all I need to do now is just close off that other set of brackets. So we've got two closing brackets at the end there, just be aware of that. I might put a comment at the end of that line that says sky. So that draws the black rectangle which makes up our sky into the game. And if we test that, as I said before, you're not really going to notice it because our screen was already black originally. But trust me, it's there. Uh, the other rectangle we want to draw is the brown ground. So it's drawn in a similar way. Screen dot draw dot filled rect. Open up a set of brackets and write rect with a capital R. And open up another set of brackets now for the coordinates. So the coordinates for this brown rectangle. We want it to start on the very left hand side of the page. So our x value will be 0. And we want it to start down where our sky finishes. So this 500 mark. I then want it to stretch all the way across the page. So it'll go all the way across to 800. And it's going to go all the way to the bottom of the page, which is 600 pixels. Close that set of brackets, put a comma, and in another set of brackets, put the color I want to use, and then close off all brackets at the end. And I'll put a comment at the end there saying ground. Now, unfortunately, we're not able to test this and actually see it working. We can test it, but you can't see that brown strip at the bottom because there is a bit of a glitch, I suppose you could say, with um, Mew and Pygame. When you run this, because we don't have the update function in our code just yet, a black strip appears down the bottom of our screen. And I know you can't see that right now because our entire screen is black, but there is a black strip covering the brown ground that we just put in. Okay, so I'm just going to have to get you to trust me, we have drawn a brown filled in rectangle at the bottom of our screen. And it's not going to be until the next video where we see it come to life. Okay, for now though, I might stop the video because we have done quite a bit. We've got our folder structure all set up. We've imported the modules we need to code up this game. We've set our screen dimensions, chosen a couple of colors that we're going to use in the background. And we've actually drawn the background using filled in rectangles. And again, we won't actually see them in action until the next video. So I'll stop this video here, maybe save your work, and I will see you in part two where we're going to get a bit more happening in the background. Okay, so I'll see you then.